Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I welcome you all for the lectures on laryngeal diseases. Today we will discuss the surgical anatomy of the larynx. As you know, larynx, the sound box of the human beings lies in front of the hypopharynx, opposite to C3, C4, C5, and C6 cervical vertebrae. It moves vertically and anteroposteriorly during swallowing and phonation. The larynx can be moved passively from side to side producing a characteristic grating sensation known as laryngeal practice. In others, the larynx ends at the lower border of C6 cervical vertebra. Laryngeal, larynx con consists of certain laryngeal cartilages and these laryngeal cartilages are single and there are some paired cartilages. The three single laryngeal cartilages are thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and epiglottis. On the other hand, the three paired cartilages of the larynx are arytenoid, corniculate of centaurine, and cuneiform of whispered cartilage. This entire view of the larynx is showing you different laryngeal cartilages. You can see here that this is the epiglottis and this is the thyroid cartilage and this the lower one is the cricoid cartilage. And this thyroid cartilage is having Adam's apple in the middle. That is the laryngeal prominence. So these are some of the cartilages which are which you can see on anterior view of the larynx. Now these two figures show the posterior view and this one shows the left oblique view of the laryngeal cartilages. On posterior view you can see the epiglottis, precart lamina, arytenoid two in number and thyroid lamina in between these two large thyroid cartilages. On the other, in the other figure, on left oblique view, you can see these cartilages as well. This is the superior view of the larynx, showing you the thyroid cartilage above, Recoid cartilage below, then this, this is the vocal ligament which is present within the vocal cords and this is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the sagittal section of the larynx showing you different cartilages and membranes and ligaments of the larynx. And in this figure you can see the coronal sec this is the coronal section of the larynx in which you can see the epiglottis having vestibule of the larynx here and this is the ventricular fold this is the vocal fold and this is the subglottic or infraglottic space so this is the coronal section of the larynx which is seen in this figure now this is the view of the larynx when we perform flexible laryngoscopy. You can see here that this is the epiglottis. This is, these are the two aryepiglottic folds and this is the vocal cords, two vocal cords, two in number and the below the vocal cords, these are the tracheal rings which are seen through the flexible laryngoscopy. 
Now the cartilage histology. The laryngeal cartilages are elastic cartilages and some of the cartilages are hyaline cartilages. The elastic cartilages are epiglottis, corniculate, cuneiform and apex of the arytenoid. There is little or no calcification at all in these elastic cartilages of the larynx. The hyaline cartilages of the larynx are thyroid, thecoid and remaining arytenoid. These calcify as the age of the human being advances. Ossification begins by 25 to 22, 30 years of age and is completed by 60 to 65 years of age. This calcification may sometimes be confused with found bodies in the esophagus or layering on plain axis. Membranes and ligaments of the larynx. These are extrinsic or intrinsic. The extrinsic membranes and ligaments, they connect the thyroid cartilage and epiglottis with hide bone, while thecoid cartilage with trachea. In intrinsic membranes and ligaments, these connect the cartilages of the larynx to each other. This is the view of the larynx showing you the extrinsic membranes and ligaments. You can see here, this is the thyroid membrane and this is the cricotracheal ligament between the thyroid cartilage and first ring of the trachea. Intrinsic membranes and ligaments. These are three in number, which are quadrangular membrane, cricovocal membrane, and thyroepiglottic ligament. The quadrangular membrane consists of aryepiglottic ligament and vestibular ligament. Whereas thicovocal membrane consists of vocal ligament and cricothyroid membrane. Now, these two figures show the intrinsic membranes of the larynx. Intrinsic muscles of the larynx. These are number one, which act on the vocal cords. These muscles which act on the vocal cords, they cause different types of movements of the vocal cords. For example, abduction, adduction, tension, lengthening, relaxation, and shortening. The muscles which perform abduction function is the posterior cricoarytenoid. The muscles which perform adduction of the vocal cords, they are lateral cricoarytenoids, transverse interarytenoid, and thyro arytenoids externally. The muscles which produce tension and lengthening of the vocal cords is the cricothyroid and the muscle which cause relaxation and shortening of the vocal cords is the vocalis muscle. The muscles which act on the laryngeal inlet, they will produce opening and closing of the laryngeal inlet. The openers are thyroepiglottic muscle, whereas the closer are the oblique interretinoideus and aryepiglottic muscle. This figure is showing you different intrinsic muscles of the larynx. Extrinsic muscles. These are the primary elevators, secondary elevators, and depressors. The primary elevators are stylopharyngeus, Salpingopharyngeus, palatopharyngeus, and thyrohyde. Whereas secondary elevators are mylohyde, stylohyde, geniohyde, and digastric. Whereas the depressors of the larynx are sternohyde, sternothyroid, and omohyde. This figure is demonstrating the extrinsic muscles of the larynx, sides and subsides of the larynx. The larynx is subdivided into three sides. One is supraglottis, second is glottis, and the last and third one is the subglottis. The supraglottis consists of epiglottis, aryepiglottic folds, ventricular bands, and laryngeal ventricle. 
the glottis consists of extends from the true vocal cords to up to 10 mm below the vocal cords and it consists of true vocal cords anterior commission and posterior commission whereas the third side of the larynx that is the subglottis it extends from 10 mm below the true vocal cords to the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage now you can see here the sides of the larynx this is the supraglottis and this is small area is the glottis and the below this one is the subglottis now you can see here that the ventricle of the larynx is encoded in the supraglottis laryngeal cavity by paired upper and lower mucosal folds which project into the lumen laryngeal cavity is divided into upper middle and lower parts the upper part of the cavity is the vestibule the middle part of the cavity is the sinus of the larynx and the lower part that is the infra glottic the upper fold is the vestibular fold guarding the vestibuli whereas the lower fold forms the vocal fold which guards the rima glottis now cavity of the larynx extends from the inlet of the larynx to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage it is divided into three regions namely the vestibule which is situated between the inlet and the vestibular folds the second one is the the middle region which is situated between the vestibular fold above and the vocal folds below and third the lower region which is situated between the vocal folds above and the lower border of the cricoid cartilage below sinus of the larynx is a small recess on each side of the larynx situated between the vestibular and vocal folds it is lined with mucous membrane the saccule of the larynx is a diverticulum of the mucous membrane that ascends from the sinus it contains some mucous glands which secrete mucus which lubricates the vocal cords now if this figure is showing you the whole story of these cavity of the larynx spaces of the larynx there are three important spaces of the larynx which are number 1 pre epiglottic space of boyer second paraglottic space and third wrinkle space the pre epiglottic space of boyer of the larynx is bounded anteriorly by thyroid membrane hyoid bone and posteriorly it is bounded by the epiglottis and superiorly it is limited by the hyo epiglottic ligament contents in this pre epiglottic space are fat areolar tissue and lymphatics it is continuous laterally with paraglottic space therefore infection of this space may lead to extension of the infection from here to the paraglottic space second is the paraglottic space this space is bounded laterally by thyroid cartilage medially by the conus elasticus quadrangular membrane posteriorly it is limited by the mucosa of the piriform fossa it compasses the laryngeal ventricle and saccule the third space is the rinki space it is the space underlying the epithelium of the vocal cords it is bounded above and below by the arcuate lines in front it is bounded by anterior commissure and behind it is bounded by the vocal process of the arachnoid cartilage mucous membrane of the larynx mucous membrane of the larynx has stratified squamous epithelium as well as pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium the stratified squamous epithelium lines the 
epiglottis. Anterior surface and upper half of the posterior surface as well. Upper part are the area epiglottic pores and vocal cords. Whereas pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium, which is also known as respiratory epithelium, lines the rest of the laryngeal mucous membrane. Blood supply. The arterial supply comes from laryngeal branch of superior and inferior thyroid artery. And the venous drainage from the superior thyroid vein, the blood is drained into internal jolar vein, whereas the blood from, through in, from the inferior thyroid vein drains into the innominate vein. Nerve supply. The superior laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerves these are the main nerve supply of the larynx. Superior laryngeal nerve divides into two branches, internal laryngeal and external laryngeal nerve. The internal laryngeal nerve takes sensations from supraglottis and glottis, whereas the external laryngeal nerve gives motor supply to the cricothyroid muscle. The recurrent laryngeal nerve, as I have said, is the second important nerve supply of the limbs. Sensations from the subglottis is through recurrent laryngeal nerve, whereas recurrent laryngeal nerve also supplies motor supply to all the intrinsic muscles except cricothyroid, which is supplied by the external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve. Lymphatic drainage, the supraglottis is drained by a thyroid membrane into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes and thyroid gland, whereas the subglottis is drained, the lymphatics drain via cricothyroid membrane into the prelaryngeal and pretracheal and lower deep cervical and mediastinal lymph nodes. On, on the other hand, the glottis virtually having no lymphatics at all. Now, differences between male and female larynx. The male larynx is 44 millimeter in length, whereas the female larynx is 36 millimeter in length. As far as the transverse diameter is concerned, in male larynx it is 43 millimeter and it is 41 millimeter in female Larynx. Sagittal diameter is 36 millimeter in males, whereas it is 26 millimeter in female larynx. And the angle of the Adam's apple is 90 degree in males, whereas it is 120 degrees in female larynx. Now the differences between adult larynx and the pediatric larynx. Now the size of the larynx in a pediatric is pediatric is small, whereas it is large in others. Then luminal shape is conical, or you can say it is funnel shape in pediatric larynx, whereas it is cylindrical shape in adult larynx. Position of the pediatric larynx is first and second cervical vertebrae. Whereas in adults, the larynx occupies the region of C3, C4, C5, and C6 cervical vertebrae. Epiglottis in pediatric larynx is omega shaped and it is leaf shaped in adult larynx. Thyroid is flat in children, whereas it is shield like in adults. Arytenoids is large in pediatric larynx and it is small in adult larynx. Mucus, mucosa and submucosa, they are lax in pediatric larynx, whereas they are adherent firmly in adult larynx. The narrowest part in pediatric larynx is the subglottis area, whereas it is the glottis which is the narrowest part in adult larynx. 
we can also recall the differences between adult and infant larynx by 7s 7s means size shape softness superiorly placed stator sensitivity and subglottis size of the larynx is smaller in infants shape in infants is funnel shape and it is cylindrical in adults the laryngeal cartilages are softer in infants and the larynx is superiorly placed in infants and it is straighter and less oblique than in adults sensitivity is greater in infants more prone to spasm that's why because the infants larynx is more sensitive as compared to the adult one and subglottis is very narrow even a small swelling can lead to airway obstruction in infants you can see here this is the adult larynx you can see this is the this larynx is a cylindrical in shape uniform lumen throughout the lumen whereas in the periodic larynx you can see in the upper part it is wider and in the lower part it is having narrower lumen so it is a cone shaped or you can say it is a funnel shaped larynx in periodic larynx thank you so much